So here's the plan of my paper. After a brief introduction, I will say something about the debate about contraception and bioethics, then and philosophy of sexuality. Uh, especially, I will concentrate on the feminists and the Ascons' uh, argument uh, about contraception. And finally, I will try to, to offer some critical remarks, seems to be relevant to bioethical debates, uh, concentrating on issues such as openness to our procreation, about the artificial devices, about the moral and the natural, about the active interference, and finally I have such a hypothesis that I will see if, uh, if I have enough time for this. Okay, here introduction, very briefly, the clarification of the terminology, what is contraception, procedure, matter of preventing conception with the goal of planning the birth of a child, or shortly, the method of the birth or the pregnancy control. Uh, usually there's a difference between the natural and artificial methods of birth control. On the one side, we have the written method of fertile and unfertile days as a natural method of birth control. On the other side, we have the wider spectrum of different uh, methods. It's barrier methods, hormone and the chemical methods, intrauterine devices, the results of postcoital protection or emergency pill, and the surgical methods such as sterilization. And the debate about the contraception, um, there is also a proposal that actually only artificial methods of birth control are actually contraception. On the other side, we have natural method of birth control. But I will use the notion of contraception in the wider sense in which the contraception uh, covers also the natural and artificial methods of birth control. And uh, also, I will not refer, I will not refer in this paper on uh, postcoital protection, emergency pill, and sterilization, because it's uh, just a bit uh, difficult. <coughs> just a bit difficult and com more complex debate. So the contraception belongs to the debate of procreative uh, autonomy, about the individual freedom to decide whether to have children, when and how, and in this sense, actually, it belongs to the group of questions like uh, abortion, assisted reproduction, surrogate, motherhood, prenatal diagnostics, experimentation, <coughs> embryos, and etc. So I will refer here mostly on this crucial document of the Catholic Church uh, as the Humanity concerning contraception, Humanity from uh, 68, uh, encyclical letter of Pope Paul, uh, Pope Paul uh, VI who excludes as morally evil every action which either in anticipation of the conjugal act or in its accomplishment or in the development of its natural consequence proposes whether as an uh, end or as a means to render procreation impossible. So, uh, According to, to, to this Humana Vita, Humana Vita, but also this is the official Catholic position, every action specifically intended to prevent procreation is forbidden, both chemical and barrier methods of contraception. All these artificial methods of birth control are held to directly contradict the moral order which is established by God. Nevertheless, on the However, a written method in which there is no active interference in the sexual intercourse is allowed as the birth control method. So the main issue of my paper here is what is wrong with artificial birth control methods or precisely what is the morally relevant difference between natural and artificial birth control methods that can justify the different treatment of these methods. So. <coughs> Uh, the status of contraception in bioethical debates. Uh, contraception, abortion, and infanticide are all measures that enable human beings to enjoy a form of sexual experience most of them prefer, while at the same time avoiding or negation uh, its reproductive consequences. So in this sense, we can say that contraception is in some sense similar to the question of abortion and infanticide. So we can ask at first whether actually contraception can be treated as a homicide 
and it seems to me that it's very trivial. Actually, the majority of, let us say, pro-life philosophers define abortion as homicide because the life of a person with all her rights allegedly starts at the moment of conception. However, the same philosopher hold, philosophers hold that contraception cannot be treated as a homicide. Nevertheless, contraception as well as abortion imposes to us the dilemmas concerning the intrinsic value of life or the value of humanity as inviolable end. So, it's true, the contraception truly prevents the creation of life or decreases the number of persons that would be possible if contraception wasn't used. So, we are now on the real potentiality argument and probably this argument can be, can be mobilized in this wider sense against uh, the uh, 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 contraception. So, it could be said that it's wrong to prevent the existence of any potential person who would naturally develop in a rational and conscious person who will be able to think and feel pain. Or, it's a serious mistake to intervene in a process that has some degree of potentiality in terms of the creation of a new person. And in bioethical debates, actually, there are several answers uh, 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 about that uh, concerning the contraception and the potentiality. Here is the Laura Purdy's uh, uh, argument or non-identity, she refers to non-identity problem. She said there seems to be no reason to believe that possible individuals are either deprived or injured if they do not exist. If we had not been created, we would not exist and there would be nobody uh, there will be nobody to be deprived of anything. So, this is not potentiality argument, but deprivation argument of the Don Marcus. Uh, he said the wrongfulness of contraception cannot be deduced from the argument of damages for future persons like us, simply because there is not a subject that we cannot arbitrarily identify as those which suffer any harm. Or, he said, Nothing at all is denied such a future by contraception, however. There is also a slippery slope argument of kind of reduction on uh, uh, absurdity. Absurd if not being brought into existence was an injury and we were committed to a principle of minimizing harm, this would imply the absurd result that failing to reproduce at maximal rate is immoral. So it would be also a uh, uh, good or bad uh, argument, uh, 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 argument in this, this debate. Here is also a probability argument of the John Noonan. John Noonan said that probability that the sperm and egg will develop after sexual relationship into new life is, sufficiently, is not sufficiently high to talk about a potential person and her potential rights. It's pro-life. Philosopher. Contraception, according to him, is permissible because of the small likelihood that spermatozoa will develop into thinking and feeling moral agent. So, okay, let's skip this. What is my conclusion? What is the conclusion from the bioethical debate about, uh, about the contraception? First, it seems to me that from the bioethical perspective, it seems that there is no reason to prohibit contraception. It does not violate the intrinsic value of life, not of humanity as inviolable end. But it is more important to me, it's not this first conclusion, but this second conclusion. No matter how we conclude bioethical debates about the moral status of contraception, it is essential to notice that in bioethical debates there is no morally relevant difference between artificial and the natural methods of contraception. So, in other words, stance is presented in the cyclical uh, letter Humana Vita, according to which written methods are admissible where artificial contraception is not, cannot be supported with any argument that, are off that is offered in biological debates. So, but there is a huge debate about the same, the same question in philosophy of sexuality, surprisingly or not. <laughs> 
Uh, namely, uh, here there is actually two positions, uh, two position, the position of pre-reform Christianity and reform Christianity toward, uh, toward the contraception. Pre-reform Christianity before humana vita, contraception converts natural sexual intercourse between spouses into non-natural because it is not aimed at procreation, which means in deviant, deviant and morally unacceptable but new theory of natural law actually is based on humana vita. And humana vita really presents a remarkable declination from the traditional procreative theory because sexuality is understood here as a necessary part of martial closeness, love, and care, not only as a mere means of reproduction. Even though the general view on procreative autonomy is specified in words, each and every single married couple must be open toward creating life. Uh, life. The so-called natural methods here in Humana Vita and according to natural, uh, the, the new theory, uh, the new theory, so-called natural method of birth control or methods known as a written method of fertile and unfertile days were allowed. So uh, the, 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 the argumentation in favor of these stances uh, 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 were offered by John Finnis and uh, S. Holmes, who's actually a uh, more sophisticated uh, uh, argumentation. So, uh, here actually is a response or, or the answer on, on the slippery slope uh, uh, argument I mentioned before. Procreation and raising children is not an obligation for all, but in sexual relations between spouses, they always have to choose the sex in which it is possible that a woman becomes pregnant. However, Finis differentiates between moral status of the choices in which someone is actively taking steps to prevent procreation from those when they are not taken, but circumstances are such that it is impossible to conceive. So, he said that the written method of birth control, in spite of the fact that full sexual relation is not fulfilled, the woman cannot be pregnant. This written method respects the value of procreation because sexual intercourse is appropriately open to the basic good. So what is actually the crucial? The crucial is that artificial contraception method can be considered as an active interference in the prevention of conception, while the written method only makes sexual partners temporary sterile. So, interference toward procreation in cases of natural conception, contraception is not a serious problem until their sexual intercourse is natural. It's also important in the sense of lack of any active uh, intervention in the sexual intercourse. Natural and inactive intervention is obviously related uh, concepts here. The more sophisticated or the final argumentation concerning that uh, 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 gives uh, Askham. She said that even if behind artificial and natural matter there are the same desire and intention, her crucial notion of intention, to avoid conception and pregnancy. Only artificial methods need to be forbidden. So, active intervention into sexual intercourse makes morally relevant difference between the allowable and improper act. Crucial's notion of intention, and she made a dis distinction between the integral and the further intentions. When a couple uses contraceptives, the intention of avoiding conception is an integral part of the sexual at the same time, the same intention is only further in the case of relying on natural methods. According to her, sexual intercourse in the infertile days is identical to sexual intercourse when it is possible to conceive. The first differs from second only by a time frame of the cycle of fertile and infertile days. Although it is de facto non-generative act in which it is not possible to conceive, such an act is intrinsically 
generically, she said, because there is no difference between such an act and an act in which it is possible to receive. So, conclusion of the ASCOM's uh, position, responsible attitude towards sexuality for, a, for uh, an honest person always involves openness to procreation of children, where openness can be uh, interpreted in the two, two ways. First, the sexual act is open to procreation if there is a spirit that is open to procreation, that spirit that is open to procreation, and the sexual act as a physical act is open to procreation if it is intrinsically general. Contrary to artificial birth control methods, natural methods satisfy both conditions of moral conduct, she said. So, critical, some critical remarks. Firstly, concerning his, uh, her, uh, the conception, her concept of openness to procreation. She said, the sexual act is open to procreation if there is a spirit that is open to procreation. So, what does it mean that there is a spirit open to procreation? It seems to me that any intentional prevention of con conception, natural or artificial, equally disregards the spirit of openness to procreation. As does not consider that the couple, it's important that the couple should have as many children as they might, and she holds that abortion is far more wrong than contraception. So, mere uh, intention of avoiding conception does not oppose the spirit of, of procreation. It is important. Eh? Mere intention of avoiding conce uh, conception does not oppose to the spirit of procreation. So, my first conclusion is, if the intention to avoid conception is morally legitimate, it does not matter whether it is integral to the act or all further. So, from the perspective of openness to procreation, artificial conception is open to procreation just as much as natural birth control method. Although, the, same. the sexual act as physical act is open to procreation if it is intrinsically generated. So, it's true that there is difference an intention to intervene in the sexual intercourse by using artificial device that can prevent pregnancy, and on the other side, intention to use a rhythm method to prevent pregnancy. <coughs> Different intentions. So, it seems to me that the only relevant difference between these two ways of legitimate avoiding conception and pregnancy, natural and artificial, is the intention to use and the usage of artificial devices. And she said that, sexual intercourse is defective and shameful if before, during, or after the act of doing something that assumes that prevents conce uh, conception and do it just because, uh, just because to prevent uh, conception. What is wrong with artificial devices? Uh, as comes, explicitly states that she is not against use of artificial means in general and that the mere use of artificial means is not contrary to natural law. She, uh, she, she, she writes about uh, some examples in which we can enhance our, our capacity to breathe under the water, you know, uh, uh, relying on some artificial devices and it's okay. So, my question, second, how an act that is correct, use of artificial devices in general, becomes wrong because as a part of his character involves intention to avoid conception that is also correct. So this I rely here on genitalities. Further, if the usage of artificial devices is a morally relevant distinction, it is necessary to provide a further explanation of what is natural behavior and the context of sexual behavior, why only intercourse without artificial devices can be classified as natural behavior in accordance to natural law, and why only natural, of course, is moral. 
Even if such a sexual intercourse is exclu uh, exclusively natural, why such natural behavior is exclusively moral? So, what is natural behavior? It seems to me that there, are, there can be two basic arguments which might be offered in defense of the position that artificial contraception should be classified as unnatural behavior in sense opposed to natural law. Analytical and empirical argument. But it seems to me that there is no any analytical or conceptual relationship between sexual intercourse with contraception and the idea of natural law, such it is conceived in ethical cognitive about full realization of human nature. It seems to me that it must be serious confusion in an identification of the biological, physical structure of sexual act with its moral structure. Also, <coughs> Empirical argument, there is no empirical evidences in favor of correlation between artificial contraception and alleged evil effects against nature or natural law, such as high divorce rate, infidelity, hostility toward children, lack of self-control, selfishness, sterility, race extinction, etc. So, the same reasons used to justify written method as consistent with natural law medical, hygienic, economic, and social, which is actually mobilized in this sense, may also justify artificial contraception. Which is free. Biological, physical structure of an act, including sexual act here, cannot determine the moral status of an act. There is not any empirical findings that also, there is not any empirical findings that prove that the sexual act with artificial devices has any moral, morally evil consequences. Finally, the active intervention, the problem of the active intervention. Active interference in procreative process is impermissible, while passive, letting things happen, letting things to happen in procreative process is permissible. So, it is a, a, a claim. So here we can notice the analogy with abortion debate, you know, in some senses, abortion is wrong because it is active interference that kills a person, that is, while letting die a person, woman in these cases, due to pregnancy, is not because it's letting die during the, uh, the difficulties during the pregnancy. Also, here is the analogy with euthanasia debate, where we differentiate between the act of killing and the passing, not saving some, uh, someone's life. However, it seems to me that there is no real analogy at first. Contraception is not a question of killing or letting die. There is no person here. And secondly, we need to make a, dis to make a distinction between the passive, passive behavior and the passive prevention strategy. Namely, written method cannot be classified as passive, uh, letting things happen. Okay. Uh, I'm finishing. Uh, uh, so the written method cannot be classified as passive like in things to ha uh, happen because a couple actively count the fertile and unfertile days using the calendar, measuring basal temperature or light. A couple intentionally and actively enter in the sexual intercourse during infertile days in which they are temporarily infertile. It is not the case that sexual intercourse happened to them during happened to them during the period of which they are temporarily infertile. So, the final conclusion, difference between artificial and natural birth control method is a difference between passive and active prevention strategies to avoid risk of pregnancy or conception. However, no one prevention strategy is not passive in a position that is active behavior. <coughs>